So today, we're gonna go ahead and torque down the camshaft, the connecting rods. We're gonna get that cylinder head on here and uh, get that torqued down as well. We'll probably go into camshafts and all things like that. We will do timing today possibly, maybe later tonight, but I want that timing part to be its own video, so that will be. So we'll go ahead and get started here and get this thing put together. What? So if you're looking at your torque specs, obviously it gives you pounds, which you can use your torque wrench, but it also gives you degrees. So I don't have a tool that'll give me my actual degrees. So I'll set myself 90 degrees from my breaker bar. And then what I'm doing, see my first turn is 30 degrees. Put my thumb about 30 degrees from that, I'm gonna turn it. About right there same thing when I go back and do the third step for 15 degrees position so myself about 90 degrees from that breaker bar to about 15 so. all right as you've seen all my connecting rods are tightened down their torques they are ready to go so I got them all set up so my number one cylinder is top dead center that's for the timing part of it once I get those uh, main cap bearing bolts uh, torqued down it's gonna be a lot harder to move there's not very much oil in there so it's a lot harder to turn so I don't want to have to turn it too much once those are torqued down so we'll go ahead and get started on that and get these guys torqued down All right, we got all those torqued. Now we're gonna have to do the degrees for the rest for finishing these out. Your torque sequence, if you watch, I went a little backwards. I went here, here, then here. Torquing it should go here, 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 then here. 
that's your torque sequence. If uh, you don't know your torque specs, you don't know what degree angle you're supposed to go, make sure you go watch my torque specs on the 04 to the 2011 Chevy Avail. That'll help you out a little bit. I'll get this my breaker bar on there. We'll get that degree set and uh, we'll keep going. All right, we got the oil pan all cleaned out and ready. Uh, we're gonna go ahead. This guy back together, she's all ready to go. That's all cleaned out. Cylinder head's cleaned up, ready to go. So we're gonna clean that out, or not clean it out. We're gonna put that back together. These are all torqued. We're gonna put the new oil pump on, pour a little bit of oil off over all these to make sure they're not dry, and then we'll put that uh, oil pan on. Then I'll flip it and we'll get started on the head. Well, unfortunately, my tripod just said, nah, I think I'm done. So, I'll do some parts. I'll try to record what I did. And, uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get a good recording on this put together. So, I'll do what I can. And, unfortunately, videos might come down a little bit until I can fully, um, well, until I can get another tripod. So, yay! Oil pan is all put back together, and it's ready to go in. Got a little damage right there from the rod coming out in the last motor, but she'll be all right. That'll work just fine. Now I'm going to go ahead and come over here. We'll get that new oil pump on. If you are doing this motor, I do suggest getting a new oil pump. New oil pump and obviously new water pump. So, yep, I'll get that done and uh, ooh, I'll get another video on it. All right, we got the new oil pump on there. So what I'm gonna do now is torque all these down to 89 inch pounds. That's what the book calls for. Once she's torqued down, you can see here that my gas is sticking up a little bit. I'm gonna take a razor blade and flatten that out and take all that little, take that little bit out so my gasket for my oil pan sits flat. We don't have a problem here. So I'll get that done and uh, get the next video made. So as you're going along, you're putting your new pump on you're about to put the oil tube on when you get the new gasket on your tube to make sure everything's good and cozy before you tighten that down put it on their finger it's kind of finger tight hold it down you should see a little bit of gap there that way you know that gasket is right and it's going to hold it down and seal it properly if that don't seal right you won't be sucking oil and you'll destroy that motor motor so yeah one other thing I'm going to do before I put that oil tube on, I'm going to put a little oil right down in there so I know that the oil pump is starting dry. Don't need to be a whole lot, just a little bit, just enough to make sure she's wet. And we got the tube installed. Oil pump's ready to go. I put a little extra oil all over the bearings to make sure it's a little bit wetter and help that first start. Uh, I did clean this up quite well. No, that's not a new tube. That's the old one. I wanted to clean it up nice and well to make sure there was no cracks along any of the any of the tube here. So if you got one you're going to reuse, I'd suggest just cleaning it up with a wire brush and making sure there's no cracks. It'll help you out down the road. So now I'm going to go around here with some brake cleaner, clean this all up, get this ready for some gasket maker, and get the pan on. We're getting close. And the oil pan is on. 
Looking good, looking nice. This oil pan doesn't have a gasket, so you gotta use gasket maker. So, I put gasket on the engine block and on the oil pan and just slapped it together. I got these a little bit tight, not just a hand tight for now. After about 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, maybe even 30 minutes, I'll tighten these down even further. That way the gasket sets, and then it can get squeezed. Next up, I'll rotate this motor and start working on that head. And the pan's on, and we got the new gasket on, the new head gasket. We can go ahead and throw the head on and tighten that thing down. All right, so we're getting ready to do our degree angles on the cylinder head. We already got done with the torque, so now we got to do the degrees. I'm going to show you another way to do the degrees on your bolts if you do not have the tool for, for that. So what I did, went around on each and then made a white line, straight line, white line. That way, each time I turn them, I can make sure they come out exactly the same. On your cylinder head, it's very important that the torque is just the same across the board. One last thing, make sure you get new bolts. Don't ever use the same old bolts, the old cylinder head bolts. So, so I want to give you guys a quick piece of advice. I was tightening down the camshaft to uh, torque it down, and one of the bolts broke. So, obviously, my uh, torque wrench, <laughs> uh, I need a new one. Um, but, uh, it broke off. It was down in there deep. I don't have the tools necessary to get it out like you're supposed to. Um, and plus, I don't have none of my drill bits here. So, what I did, you can see that there I took a flathead screwdriver and I just kind of pounded on it for a while. Until I got a nice flat ridge where I could grab it with, a screw, with that flathead screwdriver. And uh, turned it right out. So, if this happens to you guys, this is a quick idea you can do. Take a flathead screwdriver, just pound it until you can get enough ridge just to take it out. Because I know I ain't got that tool for it, and uh, you may not either, so hopefully that helps. And we got the timing belt on. Woohoo! I can tell you that was a giant pain in the butt. Uh, I didn't really go according to manual, but I, I did it my way, and it came out absolutely, positively perfect. Timing mark there. Two tiny marks line up up there. That was perfect. Uh, manual does state you're supposed to leave a water pump a bit loose. Bolts here. Uh, that way when you put this on you have a little more room to wiggle around. Uh, I didn't do it that way. I am not going to show you how I did it because you might screw something up. I've done a lot of these belts and I've learned a couple tricks over the years. And unfortunately, yeah. Really just involved a screwdriver. <laughs> I'm going to tell you anyway. Screw, uh, screwdriver here. Flathead screwdriver here. And I kind of stretched it over with another screwdriver. I kind of just moved that part over. Um, I don't suggest doing that if you haven't done that before. Um, how it is perfectly lined up and marked, it, it, that's uh, a lot of practice. You have to move this into a certain area. Same thing with down here. And that time we marked that way, when you put the tension here, they all line up the way they're supposed to be. That really takes a lot of practice to do. And I've done a lot of those like that. So, woo, that's on. It's time down. Cams are on. Obviously, it wouldn't be timed if it wasn't. So, we are extremely close. And I am extremely ready to start putting this thing in the motor. Uh, thankfully, we are down to the last few things I can stick on. Uh, I might throw on the uh, motor mount on real quick tonight before I go to bed. Or at least, you know, go relax a little bit tonight. Um, so, yeah. We're getting closer. Uh, I'm hoping to get my camera situation figured out so you can guys actually see what I'm doing. Um, obviously not sit watching me kind of is pointless for my YouTube channel. So I'll try to get another tripod here soon. Um, hopefully before I do any more motor work and you guys can watch me again, everything I do. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know down below. Uh, other than that, uh, hopefully I'll catch you guys next time with uh, another tripod. Thanks guys. All right. One last quick side note. And wow, that is really creepy. Sorry. I'm on my porch now. Um, uh, if you have never done a timing belt before, or if you haven't dealt with the dual camshafts on top, 
uh, go get yourself the special tool to lock the camshafts down. It'll make your job a lot easier because the one on the left hand side, if you're looking at the motor or looking at the timing marks, uh, the one on the left is going to jump on you. It's going to want to move. It will not stay still. So I would suggest going out and getting that tool. Uh, if you're stuck in a heart, if you're stuck in a jam, you can't afford that tool because I've been there and I know what it's like being broke. Let me know down below. I will go out and I'll try to show you guys how I do it without that tool. So let me know. And uh, guys, thanks again for watching. Really do appreciate the views.